Good morning, good evening, good night, whenever you are watching this. Thank you so much for coming to the channel. Uh, my name is Aaron Jones, and I'm going to be facilitating this wonderful conversation today. Um, I have a wonderful, spirit-filled person sitting across from me on this table right now. You're going to see her in a second. Um, what I can tell you about her is that she is a wonderful, wonderful person and is going to speak some wonderful things throughout this conversation. I know it's already in her. Um, you'll see it. You'll see it in a minute. You'll see it. Um, she's an author, singer, um, artist, everything else. She's just a lot of things in one, and she does them all expertly. Um, and I'm so excited to have this talk today. I believe that the topic at hand is one that she has lived and one that she's going to give some insight to. Um, the topic, while we're on that, on that topic, is arts and anointing. Um, and I believe that, uh, again, she's lived both of these out. She has something to say about each of these. And so I'm so excited to introduce Miss Angelique Struthers. Please clap it up, clap it up for Angelique Struthers. Yes, yes, all the claps, all the claps. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing pretty well, thank you. How about yourself? I'm doing good, I'm doing good. good. It's been a long day, but I am enjoying this moment Trust right now. Trust me, I dig it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, first, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I know I gave a little intro, just like a 5% of what you do, but please tell the people just a little bit more about yourself in your own words, please. Um, so I'm a human person. Right. And, um, I be watching movies and stuff, no. <laughs> um, so I am a worship leader and an author, as Aaron alluded to. Um, Keep talking. <laughs> I am, I am, uh, this is a lot of commas, a lot of adjectives, we'll just say it that way. Yeah, there are a lot of things um, that, I, that I do. Um, I write, I, I do sing, I, I write music, I write stage plays. I, Right, poetry, spoken word. Um, yeah, it kind of runs the gamut. I'm, a, I'm just a creative. Um, that's kind of the best way to classify it, a kingdom creative. Um, I do enjoy laughing, okay? I'm something like Elf from the movie. Laughing is my favorite, okay? <laughs> Smiling is like his, but laughing is my favorite. There we go. Um, there we I go. love laughing, making people laugh. Um, yeah, I'm, I think I'm a pretty laid back, person. <laughs> I would agree I with that. Know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know yeah. kind of <laughs> what, what you want me to talk about, but yeah, yeah. we'll start there, I guess. No, I like that. I like that. That's a pretty good intro. Um, I will say on the part of creative, um, she definitely is that. Like, I can't even say creative in one space. She's just creative in many spaces, um, as you've already heard. And currently, she is um, really been doing her thing in the writing space. She has a book out. Mm. I'm going to plug right now called In Pursuit of Surrender. It's an amazing book, amazing life story, tips. There's a whole study guide that comes with this. It's a very awesome book. I'd recommend if you are breathing to check this book out because it will have something for you. Um, and I did, you know, definitely want to have some things out of this book kind of come out in the conversation. I'm sure they're going to naturally. Mm -hmm. um, but I kind of wanted to come at this topic from the perspective of people who are creatives, mm -hmm. um, people who know they're gifted um, and who hear the words like, oh, you're anointed or I feel anointed and kind of like, where is that? Like, where is anointing and where is gifting? And kind of how do we tell between the two? Because there's definitely some differences in between the two of them. And I kind of want to get your perspective on where that kind of where that line is crossed. Um, so the first question kind of leads into this discussion um, how would you define the arts and how would you define anointing? In your own words, obviously. How would I define the arts yes. and then how would I define anointing? So, <clears throat> uh, I will say as far as defining the arts, um, I will refer to a conversation I had some years ago with a really, really good sister friend. Um, I consider her my big sister and, uh, we, it, it honestly wasn't even necessarily, I don't think, a conversation about the arts, but at some, we're both creatives. And so at some point, the conversation got to that place and, um, and I'm going from memory here, but, but 
um, what I ended up sharing based on the conversation that we were having was, um, you know, I think an artist in any discipline, I think an artist is just someone who sees the beauty in something mm. and makes it accessible for other people. And okay. so it, it, what we see is that, right, true artists, they can find beauty in some of the most depraved places and make it accessible for other people to be able to see a different narrative, a different story. Mm -hmm. um, a movie that I really, really enjoy is called Where the Heart Is. And in this movie, um, and I should probably give the disclaimer right now, I speak often in movie and TV references. Yes, yes. Also yes, sometimes yes. in song references. And we love it. If it annoys you, <laughs> deal with it. Um, so <laughs> you've been warned. <laughs> it's just, 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 that is a part of who I am. Um, my mind is always working in images and analogies and, you know, um, but in this movie where the heart is, um, there's a really, so I'm going to give part of it away. Deal with that too. It's an old movie. You should have seen it by now, but, <laughs> but in the, in the movie, and I will try not to give everything away. Yeah. Um, young woman who really has nobody. Um, she's, I think maybe 15 or 16 when she uh, is pregnant and she ends up having her baby in a Walmart and, and or she was living in the Walmart secretly living in the Walmart ends up having the baby there and um, this woman she doesn't know she's in a town where you know her she was abandoned there um, and so she doesn't know this woman at all but this woman befriends her takes her in brings her to her home um, and just essentially she becomes a part of her family mm. and she loves on her loves on her daughter and then by the time that uh, her daughter gets to five years old um, something really tragic happens um, and in the midst of the wreckage of what has happened um, and she has been a burgeoning um, photographer at this point just learning the art of photography and trying to get good at it because it's just a dream that she has and literally they are surveying the wreckage of this this catastrophe that's happened and she is you know just there they're kind of looking to see what's left what's salvageable you know and she's just snapping pictures snapping pictures and there's this moment where this tree that she was gifted by this woman who befriends her yeah um at this point the tree is you know like five years old because she gave it to her as a seedling and they planted it in their yard it's like the tree is like the only thing that's standing still. And there's a moment where her daughter, her five-year-old daughter is kind of standing and holding this tree and just looking and she snaps this picture. Um, and in the middle of this wreckage comes this beautiful juxtaposition of the innocence of this little girl and this tree that's growing in the midst of wreckage, right? So Sheesh. life that's happening in the midst of wreckage and death. Yeah. And she then wow. enters that photo into a photo contest and wins. Uh, yeah. And when so. she gets up there to give her acceptance speech, she says, um, you know, I took this photo to remind myself of a dear friend who I lost. And so this picture for her is, it signifies the loss of this woman, this friend. And it is, you can see the wreckage all around, the wreckage in the background, but you see beauty and what she was able to, she was able to find a moment of beauty in her grief right. and then made that beauty accessible for other people. Yeah. And so that was a really long way of saying that. Um, I think that arts are, you know, in, the, in any discipline, whatever your discipline is, um, the fact that you are able to find beauty in something and make it accessible for other people, I think that's kind of um, where I feel like the arts lies. Like it doesn't have to be, you know what I mean, on a stage. It doesn't have to be, yeah. you know, in a show. It doesn't have to, maybe you wanted to do something more with your recycling than just throw it in a blue can and so you decided to create a collage mm -hmm. and just maybe you want to put it outside your house and nobody sees it except the people who come past your house for but sure. it's art because you for found sure. beauty in something and you want it to make it accessible for other people so yeah i kind of a long-winded way to say I, I feel like hopefully i captured kind of that's what art is um 
I Love feel that. like anointing. So I've heard anointing, right, described because it's for me, it's um, it, it's an interesting thing to try to define. Oh, yeah. It you know be. it when you encounter it. But it's it can be a little difficult to define. For sure. Um, a simplified definition that I heard for anointing is um, God's seal of approval on mm. something. Um, to try to put in words for myself, um, I feel like I feel like anointing is what happens when God's purpose and timing interplay with um, God's gifts that he's given. Um, and, and it's this unique thing that happens then when you put the gifts together with um, his timing and his purpose. And it, and it, I mean, anointing can do amazing things. Yeah. Anointing can create atmospheres within which literally people can be healed on the spot from things, right? Mm. So I've seen um, people who are operating under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the, 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 um, the express m uh, moving of the Holy Spirit in a moment, um, and it creates an atmosphere, and someone who couldn't walk, who was in a wheelchair, literally muscle de like his legs had atrophied that's how long he had been in the wheelchair yeah but muscle definition before people's eyes began to come back and he was able to then stand up from the wheelchair and like you know amazing things happen when people operate under the anointing right when people operate in their anointing um yeah and i, I yeah i i just i it's hard for me to try to figure out a way to articulate what anointing is for sure um yeah <laughs> sure. i don't know it's, it's, i maybe as yeah. we continue to talk it'll it'll take it more form right but yeah it's <laughs> yeah yeah it's when the holy spirit just kind of steps into a moment like this is a god a god moment uh, god's gifts are on display his purpose he has a purpose that he wants to accomplish in a vessel who is willing and holy spirit just steps into that moment and it's yeah yeah so um i don't mind that being long-winded first of all because <laughs> you took us on a journey with that whole story like i'm about to watch that movie now because yes. i'm a photographer right and i like to capture beauty and so i feel like i have a connection now with this film i have to watch it it's just, Good stuff. It's just a thing but i did like how you kind of broke down that the arts has a way of people who are artists have a way of finding beauty um, because I feel like in whatever, like, art form that you do, like, if you are gifted in that, in that place, you have an eye for that sort of thing. Naturally, that's why, you know, that's what the gift does. It, it, it makes you, it puts something different in your perspective so you can create something that people naturally normally probably mm -hmm. wouldn't create because you have that certain gifting, a certain eye for that thing. And so I like how you explain that, um... I also do agree with you that the anointing is a, it, 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 that's why when I said it, I was like, you know, it sounds like a very simple thing. It's a hard thing to try to It sounds down. like a very simple and, thing. But and then I don't when know, you get there into, are people who are better than me who can, who can probably boom, sure, boom, 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 the, this is the, what it you is. Know, but yeah, I listen. That's the, the best I got, y'all. And, and look, that's 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 good though. That's good though because the, the definitely scholars that spend their lives studying this one word. But I do think that. You know, in terms of... And to be sure, the on. sad thing is... Yeah. There are people who can spend their lives studying a thing and never experience a thing for themselves. Come and on. And so there are people who can study an anointing... Yeah. But there's a thing that God wants them to do, and they never surrender to that purpose, and so they never get to experience firsthand an anointing, Sheesh. but they can intellectually tell you anything that you want to know about an anointing, mm. except how to do it <laughs> right it's like it's like somebody who lives in do they get snow in california do they get snow there 
They don't get snow in California. So somebody in California so. telling you about snow, but never experiencing snow, but they're telling you what it is, how it feels, what it does. That's like, but you never experienced that. Yeah. So your vantage point is different from somebody who's actually experienced it. You mm-hmm. might have a lot of head knowledge. That doesn't equate to experience. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I agree with that, too. Um, yeah, it's, t- it's touchy. But I do want to emphasize, though, that the anointing we're talking about is more so less the act of anointing, the smearing of oil and things like that. It's more so um, like people who are anointed to do things, what, you know, kind of what that is. So when I think of the, you know, the uh, not the act of anointing, but someone who's anointed, I think of someone who was chosen by divine selection for a specific task. Um, so, such as when Samuel went to anoint David. One of my favorites. Um, that was literally him, you know, coming on, on God's behalf to anoint him king. So, the, even in that, that was an anointing. Um, if you go back to my namesake, um, Aaron, you know, Moses had to anoint the Levites, the first priests, for their task of leading the people. Um, and so when I think of that, I think of, you know, God choosing someone for a specific task. And so there are people who can be chosen to be craftsmen. There are people who can be chosen to, you know, do things like, you know, carpentry, who can even, you know, be chosen to sing, chosen to build things. Um, there, are, there are things you can be chosen to do. But I think gifting and anointing tend to be put in the same place when they're slightly different. You can be gifted in something and not anointed in it which is what I'm trying to get at, is that people will usually equate gifting to anointing and say, because you can, you know, you have a, a great um, hand to, to create certain things, you know, to paint, you have an awesome voice and you can sing, that almost means you're anointed to do that, not necessarily. Um, because there are people with many gifts who are not chosen by God to do those certain things. And so that's what I'm trying to get at. But um, that's kind of why I want to stop for a second, mm-hmm. move on, because we'll be talking about this, the rest of the conversation. And I did bring questions. I want to ask the <laughs> questions. Um, so this one, we kind of, actually, we didn't answer this one. We didn't answer this. Would you consider yourself anointed? Yeah, in some things. Yeah, absolutely. So as an anointed artist, mm-hmm. how do you feel those coexist in your life? anointed artist um well the simplest way to state that the the coexistence of the two um is that um so i am an artist but my anointing also rests in the area of of the art forms that that i partake in Mm because they're uh, to your point um people can be gifted and even passionate that's a good in a word, certain so. area, mm-hmm. um, but not anointed to to be purposeful in that area, right? So That's an anointing good. was always for a purpose. Um, and to your point about anointing in the Bible, right? The oil sort of signified the resting of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, and and so. Yeah, for me, the coexistence of the two, um, it just so happens that <laughs> um, it just so happens that for me, uh, the art for and, 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 you know, that's a that's a funny thing, too, because, again, um, like you said, people can be gifted in multiple areas, um, but not anointed to do, you know, exactly. Um, and and so it's fine to have a passion in a certain area or even a gift in a certain area and to use it. Um, But that may not be the place where God wants to move purposefully and allow people to experience heaven on earth, right? Because Holy Spirit is the third expression of the Godhead, right? God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. And so he is the third expression of the Godhead, um, the Trinity. And we hopefully can all agree that God lives in heaven. <laughs> I would hope so. And the son is at his right hand. You know. And the Holy Spirit, right, lives inside of those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their savior. Amen. Um, but that literally is a way for 
heaven to come to earth, for the earth to experience an expression of heaven is for us to operate in the areas that we are specifically called to be purposeful the through the yeah. power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So if I could sing, but was not anointed to sing, which is not true for me, but I'm just making an example here. Sure. If I could sing, but was not anointed to sing, I might be able to put on a concert um, and impress people. Um, but I would not be able to put on a concert and um, unless there was just a moment Holy Spirit was like, I'm going to just do what I do. I know you singing about this, but this is what I want to do. Um, but I could put on a concert and sing for an hour and a half and people be impressed, but not impacted. Yeah. Um, people could be impressed, um, but not changed. Mm. Um, people could be impressed, um, entertained even, right? Yeah, you could be entertained. People will word. come away talking about, yo, did you see how she hit this and then she did this spin? And mm -hmm. when she hit that note and then she hit that run, I was like, ooh, hoo, hoo, right? Because oftentimes that's what happens even in a church setting, if I can be honest. People yeah. are impressed and entertained yeah. by a gift but there is no seal of the Holy Spirit moving through that gift because maybe this isn't where I've called you to actually be purposeful and impactful in the earth. That's or it. maybe this is where I called you to be purposeful and impactful in the earth, but you haven't surrendered yet. And there's a level Bring that I will book. not allow you to release until your life looks like what I'm trying to release through you. You know what I mean? Yes. And so, That's good. That's good. Um, and so just recognizing those things as well. Like again, yes, I could have an artistic gift, but I could be anointed uh, to, to be a lawyer, to, to help be an advocate for people who otherwise wouldn't have one, um, which is a funny thing. I wanted to be a lawyer. Since I was a kid, I would walk around anytime anybody asked me what I wanted to be, I wanted to be a lawyer. Now, Lawyer was kind of like third choice because mm -hmm. when I was a little girl, I wanted to be a ballerina oh. and then I wanted to be a veterinarian. And then I realized <laughs> veterinarians had to see more than just cats and dogs. They had to see like snakes and reptiles. And I was like, eh, probably not. <laughs> um, but then I have no idea where it came from. Um, but I was like, I'm gonna be a lawyer. And so anytime anybody asked me what I wanted to be, it was a lawyer. Went to, to undergrad got my my bachelor's degree and y'all nothing is wasted now i don't know how he gonna use it because i'm certainly not but my yeah. bachelor's degree is in political science with an emphasis on pre-law and then i declared um psychology as my minor because i fell in love with psychology uh-huh right so my degree is in political science with an emphasis in pre-law because I wanted to set myself up well to step into law school because I had this idea in my mind, this passionate idea that I would be a lawyer, mm -hmm. that I would help people, that I would advocate for people. <laughs> oh man, he's getting revelation in the moment. Come on. <laughs> I have no idea where it came from, right? And while I would like you know, very matter of factly tell anybody, yeah, I'm gonna be a lawyer, I'm gonna study to be a lawyer. There actually wasn't a passion in me to be a lawyer. Wow. But I could passionately be like, yeah, I'm gonna be a lawyer. But it wasn't real passion. There was no passion in me to be a lawyer. I wanted to help people. Mm -hmm. And that was the part that I focused in on. But I wasn't passionate about being a lawyer. Could I have become a lawyer? Sure, I still can if I want to. But that's not what I'm called to do. That's good. And so I could have become a lawyer and been in the courtroom and even have a successful um, uh, uh, winning ratio in the courtroom, right? I could have had a successful um, run, but I would be doing that in my own power. I would be doing that um, in my own strength. I wouldn't be relying on mm. the Holy Spirit and when you rely on the Holy Spirit, the beautiful thing is he will step in and do things that in and of yourself you cannot do. not do. You can't. 
Um, but when you are operating in anointing and you rely on Holy Spirit instead of what you're gifted, like, oh, I got this gift, I could get up here and say, okay, you could. But chains aren't gonna break when you do it that way. But if I rely on Holy Spirit and invite him into this moment, well, now the anointing takes over. Because this is what I'm called to do, what I'm purposed to do, and I am partnering with the one who called me to it and inviting him to step in and do in that moment what he wants to do. And so when yes. I rely on, yes. so I could go into a courtroom, I absolutely could. I am confident of my intellectual ability to go to law school right now. I'm 37 years old. I will go back to school. It won't be for law. <laughs> <laughs> so I said what I said. <laughs> but it, yeah. it, it will be to get my master's and my doctorate in, in psychology, counseling psychology. Um, but I could become a lawyer. I have the intellectual capacity to be a lawyer. I have the compassion now. Lawyers ain't often known for compassion. <laughs> okay. If we're honest. <laughs> they, you take off to come and they passionate about money though. Yeah. Take off the COM. They can be passionate about money. Yeah. They could be passionate about winning. They could be passionate about being cutthroat, being seen as the best. But you don't often hear about lawyers operating in compassion. Now there are some who do, mm -hmm. but that's not the archetype that we think of when it comes to lawyers. It's not the norm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, I could become a lawyer if I wanted to. I have the intellectual capacity. I have the ability and I have the freedom to do so. But his anointing wouldn't rest on me in that because that's not how he called me to be a change maker in the earth. Mm -hmm. While it is a noble pursuit, it is not what he called me to do to bring heaven to earth. And so, um, and so, yeah, like I, I, yes, yeah, but again, back to your original question, because I think I went <laughs> way down the rabbit hole. Wonderful tangent, though. About Wonderful the coexistence tangent. of the arts and the anointing. Yeah. Um, is is for me, it's been that my anointing is in the arts. There are other things that I have the ability and ca the capability to do. Um. But if he hasn't called me to that, the anointing won't rest on me there. He'll allow me to do it, to pursue it, because I have free will. Uh -huh. But the anointing won't rest on me there. And I will be doing that in my own power and strength. And eventually, I will wear myself out. Because we weren't meant to do life in our own power and strength. That's why Jesus sent Holy Spirit. That's part of the reason why he sent Holy Spirit. Yeah. So I have no idea if I just answered your question. I kind of answered the question I wanted to answer. So. <laughs> I love that we went on that wonderful, wonderful tangent. Mm -hmm. However, we're going to move on to a special piece. I have um, some Bible. We all love the Bible, right? We all okay. love the word. Let's then, um, as Pastor John Hannah say, let's go Bible. <laughs> Amen. Now let's take a break for this special shout out. Linnea Adamson, founder of Linnea Speaks, describes herself as a birth doula turned vision doula. Having worked in social services for over 15 years, she now brings that experience to her signature programs, Birth the Vision and I Am Not My Diagnosis. Linnea seeks to speak for those who won't always speak for themselves, remove the mask, and go deeper into the real issues of a matter. To book and connect with Linnea, head over to LinneaSpeaks.com. That's L-A-N-N-E-A Speaks.com. You'll be all the better for it. Now back to the show. Um, but I have a scripture here that um, I kind of want to get your thoughts on mm -hmm. in terms of arts and anointing and kind of what we can get from this, um, this excerpt. So... Um, to give some context, this is um, Exodus chapter 31. Um, right now, um, Moses is on top of Mount Sinai with God, getting the rules and the um, instructions for how the people are going to worship God. 
He's always getting covenants, he's getting offerings, mm -hmm. he's getting all this type of things, all this type of instructions for the people. Um, and in this particular piece, he's talking about the craftsmen who are going to help build the tabernacle. So this is um, Exodus chapter 31, verses 1 through 6. It says, Therefore, um, then the Lord said to Moses, Look, I have specifically chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, grandson of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. I have filled him with the Spirit of God, giving him great wisdom, ability, and expertise in all kinds of crafts. He is a master craftsman, expert in working with gold, silver, and bronze. He is skilled in engraving and mounting gemstones and in carving wood. He is a master at every craft. And I have personally appointed Aholiab, Aholiab son of Ahisamach, of the tribe of Dan, to be his assistant. Moreover, I have given special skill to all the gifted craftsmen so that they can make all the things I have commanded you to make. Mm -hmm. And so what I hear in there is a little bit of what you mentioned earlier, that um, we can be gifted in a lot of things, but it matters what God appoints us to do. Mm -hmm. It matters what he calls us to do. So um, just based on that excerpt, um, kind of what did you get from that scripture and how do you think it can, um, we can take anything from that, how it relates to us today? Yeah, so one thing, um, one thing that um, I guess I'll call it a phenomenon no, that happens is that there are people who um, can operate under an anointing in a discipline that they didn't traditionally learn, right? Um, and I'm thinking about verse 5. Is it verse 5? No, I'm thinking about verse, well, first of all, verse 3. All right. But then uh, also verse 6, right? So in verse yeah. 3, this is God speaking, um, right? So first he says, I have chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, grandson of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. So I've chosen this guy, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God that's now giving him great wisdom, ability, and expertise in all kinds of crafts, right? right? Um, and so his ability comes from God. It's not just something that he has a talent for. Mm -hmm. he, he specifically was chosen and then gifted by God to do these things, right? Um, so he's a master craftsman, expert in working with gold, silver, and bronze. He's skilled in engraving, mounting gemstones, and carving wood. He's mas he is a master at every craft. Then when you go to verse six, and I have personally appointed, right? So chosen, appointed, these are words that God is using. I've chosen this one. I've appointed this one. Um, and uh, he says, moreover, I have given special skill to all the gifted craftsmen so that they can make all the things I've commanded you to make. Um, and so one thing that says to me is everything that God knew that he was going to utilize them to do he equipped them to do he's very clear i gave them what they needed to complete at a time that they didn't know was coming mm. but i gave them before they needed everything that they would need to complete a task that i predetermined i wanted them to do Right. They had no idea that they were going to have the privilege then of working on these specific crafts for uh, the tabernacle, for um, what the Levites would wear, for the, the Ark of the Cup. They had no idea that they would have this privilege, but they were gifted before they knew what it was even for. And so one, right, words like God has chosen, God has appointed. So let's be very clear. For God's anointing to flow, you don't choose and appoint yourself. Soundbite right there. That's what's going on um, Instagram right there. <laughs> That's the one. Please say that again. Please say that again. <laughs> so good. For God's anointing to flow, you don't get to be the one who chooses and appoints yourself. Can't be you. Now, you can choose and appoint yourself into whatever you want, but don't expect his anointing to follow. You have free will, right? We have free will. I can 
go and be a lawyer and be in a courtroom, I don't know, two years from now. I can, but I cannot do that, choose and appoint myself to do that, and then expect Holy Spirit to step in and anoint it. Come on. Now, if he chooses to, that's his business. He's sovereign. He's God. He can do whatever he want to do, when he want to, how he want to, with whomever he want to, for as long as he want to. Facts. But I cannot choose and appoint myself into something and expect him to show up and anoint that thing. And that's oftentimes what we do. And let me be very clear. Yes, we talk about anointing in terms of gifting and, 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 and purpose, etc. But there are people are re, we're relational. We are anointed for certain relationships, right? Marriage is an it's it's a it's an appointed relation. It should be. <laughs> That's a whole different show that Aaron did not ask me in to do. Okay. Uh. We're not going to go down that rabbit hole. Right, right. But it should be God-ordained. A man and a woman chosen and appointed by God to enter into the covenant of marriage. And there is an anointing that flows when we step into what God has purposed and called us to do. Right? And so in a previous season of someone's life, the anointing for marriage wasn't flowing because it wasn't the season for that. And if it started flowing before it was the season for that, they would have probably found the first person that they could, who can the anointing flow to? <laughs> <laughs> who can it? Because listen. Who is it? And so there are you? many people, right, who are entering into marriage, which is, again, supposed to be a God-ordained relationship. Uh-huh but they have chosen and appointed themselves for these relationships. Yes. God ain't chosen and appointed jack squat. But when we have a wedding, we expect Holy Spirit to come in and anoint this thing, right. to come in and bless this thing. So anointing yeah. is not just about operating in a gifting, a calling, a purpose, etc. Anointing flows in relationship. We're called to relationship, to friendship, to community. There are people who are walking with you, right? You heard about it, the, the seasons, the reasons, and the lifetimes. Yeah. There are people who are appointed to be in your life for a season. But when the anointing for that season begins, you feel the pull away. And it's time for a separation. When God has chosen and appointed his Holy Spirit will come in and will ensure that you can do whatever it is that I've called. If you're, if you're called, you're chosen and appointed to this marriage holy, by, by God, Holy Spirit will anoint you to walk through the difficult and the good times. He will anoint you to walk through disagreements. He will anoint you to do the work of marriage. If God has chosen and appointed you to walk in a specific gifting or calling to get back to the specific, I just had to go there real quick, yeah, but to get yeah. back to the specific topic of this discussion, if he has called and chosen and appointed you to operate in a specific gifting, specific art form, Holy Spirit will show up. One of the ways that um, this is poignant for me, when I first started leading worship, so I started leading worship, um, I think it was like 2009. Um, she a pro, y'all. No, let me look at my phone because I actually, <laughs> my memory is not great. So I she put it in my streets. phone when my worship leading anniversary is so I can remember it. Okay. June the 3rd. I just had an anniversary. Come mm -hmm. on. Congratulations. 2009, June the 3rd, 2009. And um, was when I started leading worship. And um, I didn't have any you know, particular instruction. I had people who saw something in me mm -hmm. and called it out of me when I was not comfortable with it. Yeah. And I was like, all right, cause we homies. I'll do it. It's one time, one time. And, um, and so they called out of me something that they saw in me that I didn't see in me. Cause I was comfortable in the background. So I started leading in 2009, and 2012, um, 
uh, was when Pastor Jason came back to Macedonia and yep. and then began to um, pour into me specifically um, within the realm of you know worship leading etc and then even beyond there um, one of the things that Pastor Jason used to say to me is um, to and I'm going to paraphrase but to put the responsibility back on the Holy Spirit to show up. So in those moments before worship, you know, when you get nervous and you're like, I just don't want to screw up. I don't want to get out here and make myself look foolish. I don't want people to think I can't sing. I, all of these thoughts about self that kind of go through your mind as you're, again, learning and growing and developing. Um, and, you know, in one of our conversations, he said to me, when you step into those moments, give the responsibility back to the Holy Spirit to show up. Because the responsibility is not on you for someone's life to be changed. Right. And if you take it upon yourself, they'll leave unchanged. He ain't say that, but I'm saying it. Mm -hmm. um, because what was happening was I was putting a lot of weight on me to do things in worse that I cannot do. And so then to hear people speak over you, you know, this is what you're called to. This is the sound that you carry. So then if you're not careful, you will take the responsibility of what God wants to do with the gift that he's placed in you, that he wants to operate in anointing through you. If you're not careful, you will take the responsibility of that on yourself. But we can't do it. That's the whole point. We're not called to do things that we can do by ourselves. We're called to do things that require us to partner with Holy Spirit in such a way that we are relying on him because it's God's plan. And as the saying goes, when it's God's will, God puts the bill. So if he's chosen and he's appointed, one thing that we can be sure of and we see it in the screen is that he's already equipped. But then when it comes to the flowing of the anointing, He's chosen, he's appointed, and so he is uh, bound. Holy Spirit is bound to show, because it's a God thing. I'm just doing a God thing. This wasn't my idea, this was God's idea. I am doing what he asked me to do. And when I show up at the place that he's called me to be, to be doing what he's called me to do, Holy Spirit will then show up and do what I can't do. Yeah. I'm just a vessel that's willing to have Holy Spirit step in. And so, um, yeah, just recognizing that for me, what I see there in that scripture is one, God's chosen, God has appointed, um, God has given special knowledge and skill, God has equipped. Um, the other thing, I think there was another thing that I saw there in the scripture. Oh, that's what I wanted to go back to. There are people who can, op who can operate in artistic art forms that they have not been trained to it flow, it naturally flows through them, right? Um, uh, Pastor Jason, as a matter of fact, is one who didn't have like formal piano lessons. God literally anointed him to just be able to play. Mm -hmm. And then he began to grow in that gift the more that he practiced it, the more that he did it. There are musicians that I know that they didn't have any formal training. People will sometimes ask me, so did you have like voice lessons? How long were you in voice? Actually, somebody a couple weeks ago, um, somebody asked me, you know, just asking to kind of get to know me, get a, a context for me. And they said, so have you had any vocal training, like any voice lessons, you know? And, and people will often ask, you know, how long have you been in vocal training? And my answer always at this time is no, I haven't, but I want to. Um, and, and so I've never had vocal training. But what I do know is I could listen to a recording of me from 2007, 2009. As a matter of fact, <laughs> there's a particularly embarrassing recording of me. Um, <laughs> I have it at home. Just watch it when I start taking myself too seriously. Um, from my senior year in high school in 2003. Come on, high school. Because that's when I graduated high school. Come on. Okay, Take us there. Take shortly us there. after the 1900s, okay? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so when I graduated high school in 03, 
I was in, and it was completely outside of my comfort zone, but I was in my high schools. Um, so I went to school down south. So yeah. I'm from Pittsburgh, but grew up in Pittsburgh, Jersey, Virginia. And so I went to school, high school in Virginia. And so like up here, um, y'all have like high school musicals. We didn't have those so much down there. Um, we had pageants. Yeah. And so completely outside of my comfort zone, but I had a life altering, um, life threatening uh, experience um, when I was 15, just before my 16th birthday, and it sparked something in me. And so stepped outside of my comfort zone and I um, auditioned for my high school's pageant my senior year. It got chosen for it. And so there is a particularly <laughs> embarrassing recording of me singing in 2003. <laughs> and I can listen to that versus recordings on like Macedonia's YouTube page or whatever of me singing now, night and day. Mm -hmm. But there was no vocal training in between there. There was levels of surrender, though. Mm -hmm. And God was very clear with me through prophetic words and just in, in my time with him. If you are willing to press into me because there is a sound that I want to release through you. And this is what I've called that sound to accomplish. If you sit with me, if you spend time with me, I will inform your gift for you. And so, yes, I'm still responsible to care well for my gift, which is why I do want to go to vocal training. And I do want to make sure that I'm using best vocal practice and getting the best out of my voice and caring for it well in between uses, because that's still my responsibility to steward the gift. For sure. But there are certain levels that you can only get to in a gifting by leaning into the one who gifted it. It's sort of like. It's sort of like if I had a, a, a brilliant, uh, I don't know, scientist, engineer person in, in, in my family and they designed and created this gift this you know gift that they wanted to give me this electronic gift and so it's not something that's on the market in the stores um but they decided oh this is going to be great this is not something that they have in stores but this would be perfect for her because she needs something to do this so they just create it out just pull it out of her hair because they're anointed uh, to do that bring the word back i am not <laughs> okay so <laughs> so they decide that they're going to make me this gift that will do what I this electronic something that does whatever I don't know I need it to do. Who knows? Right. But so they create it. It's not something on the market. They gift it to me. And then they say, I made this for you to do such and such and so and so because you're always doing so and so. And I figured this could be helpful. So it's perfect. But it's not on the market. So it doesn't come with a manual. So if I want to get the full use of this gift that I've been given by this family member, I have to refer to the one who created it because only that person knows everything that this gift entails. They know all of the features and the details and all of the things that this gift can do. And so they might say on the day that they gift it, yeah, it can do such and such and so and so. Okay, cool. So I'm thinking this gift can do such and such and so and so. And then they say months later, so how are you enjoying the gift? Oh, it's great. It works great for such and such and so and so. And they said, well, you haven't used it for X, Y, and Z and A, B, C and element O, P. And then I say, I didn't know it could do X, Y, and Z and A, B, C and element O, P. And they say, well, let me show you what it can. Mm -hmm. Only the person who made it yeah. can unpack everything that it's able to do. And it works the same way with our giftings, right? Yes, I can inform myself through education. I can inform myself through uh, getting proper training. But there are certain levels and dimensions that I can only tap into by tapping into the one who gifted it. Because yes, vocal coaches and trainers are, are they are um, knowledgeable and some of them even anointed to do what they do. But they are not even fully aware of the gift that God put inside of us. Only he is. And so again, 2003 to 2022, ooh, that's a lot of time. Anyway, mm -hmm. two different vocal qualities, 
sounds, the timbre of my voice, all of these things, technique that I did not receive training for, but I did sit with the one who gave me the gift. And he promised me that if I was willing to sit with him, he would inform the gift. And so there are things that I've learned to do and I don't know the name for it. There are things that I do and I have no idea how to describe it or how to express it. Sometimes something will come out and I'll be like, oh, that surprised me. That was nice, Jesus. I don't know how you did that, but that was nice. Can you do it again? Just, just, just try it again, see what happens, right? But I, I didn't receive specific training, but I do have an anointing. And I was willing to sit with the one who wanted to speak through me, sing through me, write through me. And because I was willing, there are certain things that I have been able to tap into that perhaps a vocal coach could break down. This is what's happening here. And then watch the way that she's changing the sound of the, and this is why, and this is how it, and then this, it, they can explain it. I can't because I haven't had the training, but I have been sitting with the one who gave it. And so he unlocked some dimensions. He gave me access to some dimensions that only come by going back to him. And so there are, that was another thing that I wanted to just lift up based on what I was seeing there again, um, as God is specifically saying, I'm giving him this skill. I gave this one this skill. And then I'm going to give them a special knowledge, a special gift to do X, Y, and Z. So not just be a carpenter, but I'm going to make them masterful. They've never been to a carpentry school, but if you can imagine it, they can design and build it. I got this loose idea. I don't know exactly how it could work, but I had this idea of this and they will script out a masterpiece because it's what they're anointed to do. And there's not been formal training necessarily, but they have been anointed. And they've allowed the one who gives the anointing to inform it. And so that was another thing that I saw in there. So I'm going to say nothing else. It's all been said. Um, if I could sum it up in a quick sentence, go to the one who gave you the gift. Go to the one who gave you the gift. And addendum, let him reveal to you what he's appointed you to do. Yeah. And the anointing will be found in that. So, But also, um, you oh. ain't alleviated from responsibility. Huh? Still steward your gift well, okay? Yes. You do have a responsibility. Yes. Continue. No, thank you, thank you. That was, that was needed too. Um, I hope you got, no, I know you got something out of this conversation. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for showing up, as it were. Thank you for watching. Um, please stay tuned for the next episode. Any final words you want to give to the people? Buy the book. Any other words you want to give to the people? <laughs> yeah, because I wouldn't have said that. Right. <laughs> buy the book. Just, just let other people say it. Um, just buy the book. Any other words? Yeah, I will. Um, especially as it pertains to arts and anointing. Um, don't allow people to paint you into a box. Um, everyone thinks that everyone thinks that anointing has to look a certain way. Anointing is for inside the four walls of the church. Well, no, no, because if it's only for inside the four walls of the church, how then do we reach those outside of the church to get them, you know? And so I would say, especially as it pertains to arts and anointing, don't allow people to paint you into this box of what they think artistic anointing has to look like. Well, if it comes from God, then you have to write songs about God. But what about Lin-Manuel Miranda, who in my opinion is a freaking genius, who very clearly is gifted and operates at a level that everyone who writes a musical doesn't necessarily operate at, right? Everyone who sets their pen to a page doesn't write at that level. 
And so whether he realizes it or not, whether he acknowledges it or not, there is a gift from God that's at work doing what God set it forth to do, right? Somebody like a baby face who literally wrote everything from like 1970 something to now. Exaggeration, but just barely. There's no, there's no way that this dude just cranks out hit after hit after hit, not just for himself, but for myriad artists across uh, cultural and, and genre lines. It flows through him, not from him, but through him. And they just keep coming and coming and coming and it just, there's no way, like you, you cannot, you cannot say that anointing only flows within the four walls of the, because everybody's not called to minister within the four walls of a church. And so again, I'll keep it within the arts and anointing piece, especially as it pertains to art. People will try to tell you that this is what it has to look like. You can't write, you can't write those kind of songs. But if I heard it and it flows through me and it's not, um, and it's not tearing, <laughs> tearing down the kingdom of heaven, because there's some songs that just, Okay, they were not written under the anointing of the Holy Spirit is all I'm saying. Um, but your gift does not have to look. I think about artists like Tori Kelly, who is a Christian, but is not a Christian artist, so to speak. But some of her art, she would, would the, the album that she released, the, the Christian album that she released. Now, that's not her primary genre platform but she's a believer. And so everything that she does is informed by God through Holy Spirit. And if she wants to, when she's called to, she release a Christian album. But every album that she releases ain't a Christian album, but it is informed by a Christian worldview. Anthony Evans, who I freaking love, um, and has been a, a major part of my own just growth in, in, in testimony. He talks about how, you know, he talks about this and, and, and one of the things that he says is that again, right, this box that people try to paint you into, that you're a Christian or you're a Christian artist. Your art has to look like this. But Christians go through these things too. And there are other Christians and others in the world that God wants to call to himself that need to know that, yes, I can love God and go through this, too. Yes, I can love God and feel this way. Yes, I can love God and wrestle depression. Yes, I can love God and wrestle with anxiety. Yes, I can love God and wrestle with lust. Yes, I can love God and this, 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 this. this. And he's like, and so we need songs about all the other stuff, too. Not just this type of song that you would sing in a worship set on Sunday. We also need songs about the other stuff too, from a Christian worldview. Because people need to know that I can be in relationship with God and not be perfect. And there's still hope to become better. There's still hope to see better. And so don't let people paint you into a box because otherwise, right? What if you're anointed for outside the box and you choose to walk in what people have chosen and appointed you to inside the box, but God's waiting for you out here. The anointing is waiting to meet your gift outside the box, but you choose to live according to people's expectations, people's thoughts about what your art form should look like. And so you never meet up with anointing because you never step outside the box because you were never anointed for inside the box. And so that's what I would say, especially with regards to arts and anointing, is it does not have to look a certain way. 
and don't give in to people's pressures that this is what artistic anointing is supposed to look like because God is the one who gives. So he is the one who informs. So don't be painted inside this box or don't feel like I have to, okay, I have to do it this way. No, you're responsible for what God says, not what people say. When we get there on that great day, as they say, he's not going to ask you, well, when so-and-so told you to do such and such, why you ain't do it? He's going to say, I gave you a responsibility and I gave you a gift and I equipped you to complete it. Why didn't you? That's what he's gonna ask. I gave you this gift of this art and I gave you a purpose, an assignment to complete with it. I equipped you with everything that you would need to complete the assignment, but you never stepped outside the box, why not? Yeah. All right, peace and deuces. See you on the next one, see you on the next one. Thank you so much for inviting me to be a part. And thank you for inviting me to sit in your light skinned it chair. It was, it was very lovely. Thank you for watching What I Think, sharing our stories. I hope you enjoyed it and got a little something from this conversation. If you have any suggestions, questions, or comments, please make sure you jot them down in our comment section. Again, thank you for watching. Have a blessed day.